Hey, and welcome to this tutorial on setting up and deploying a local test server. The goal of this tutorial is to get you set up with the tools you need to get started with PACT locally. That said, you may have seen an earlier tutorial that covers getting set up with PACT also, but this one's different. In this tutorial, we'll go into more depth on things like the YAML API requests and endpoint types. We'll take you into the next level of understanding and interacting with your local test server. Aside from letting you explore even more of PACT's functionality, it puts you in a good position to complete our next tutorial, PACT and JavaScript. In that tutorial, you bring all the pieces together to get your first look at developing your first full-stack blockchain application with PACT. So let's take some time now to get you deploying on your own local test server. Before getting started, here's a quick overview of what you'll create and how all the pieces fit together. Starting in your terminal, you'll create a project directory along with an example.yaml and a config.yaml file to store your code. The example.yaml file will include the program you're trying to run, and the config.yaml file will specify things such as the port, which will be on 8080, and the path to the log folder that will log the data. Next, you'll populate each of the YAML files, create the log folder, and run the PAC server. After the server is running, you'll need a way to send the code in the example.yaml file to the packed server. This is done by first converting the code into JSON, then by sending this JSON to the server using a variety of commands, including send, local, listen, or pull, depending on your needs. I'll show you each of these commands in more detail as we go through the tutorial. For now, use this to help organize your thoughts around what we're doing. When you're ready, let's start building. First, navigate to the directory where you'll be creating your project. From there, create a directory named Deploy Tutorial. Navigate into the folder and create both a config.yaml file and an example.yaml file. I'll do that using touch config.yaml and touch example.yaml. Now, I'll populate each of these files, then go back and explain each of them in a bit more detail. The config.yaml file follows a standard format and you can populate this using the link provided below the video. Copy this into your config.yaml and save the file. Next, populate the example.yaml file with the example provided in the documentation using the link below the video. Copy this text, paste it into your example.yaml file, and save this file. Now that we've got the code, let's look back at each of these files in more detail. Looking back at the config file, you can see four fields. The HTTP server port specifies 8080. This can change depending on which port you need, but we often use 8080 in our examples, so you can leave this as it is for now. Next, the directory for HTTP logs states where the application's data will be stored. This is a folder that you'll need to create for yourself shortly. The SQLite pragmas you don't need to worry much about, but it's an empty list that you don't need to change and verbose specifies whether or not you want to provide log input using true or false. Let's take a look at the example.yaml file next, which is slightly different. Here you can see the actual code that will be running on the PAC server. In this case, it includes the code 1 plus 2 and some data, like name Stuart and language PACT. Along with that is the key pairs for this code. The code is formatted using the format specified in the documentation. You can find a link to this below the video. You'll see that the format includes keys such as code, code file, data, data file, key pairs, nonce, from, and to. All of these have their own use case, but only code and key pairs are required, which are two of the keys you can see in our example.yaml file. We'll stick to these for now. Some things to note are that if you use the data key, it defaults to an empty object, and nonce defaults to the current date and time. Other details about each of these keys can be found in the documentation. Okay, great. Now that we've seen all the code, we can head back to our terminal and focus on deploying the server. To start, you'll need to create a log folder, which was specified in the config.yaml file as the log directory. To do that, I'll type make dir log. Next, check the directory to see that you're all set up with your log and yaml files. Finally, let's run the pack server. Type packed s and provide it a config.yaml file. After running this, you can see that you initialized a PAC server and that it's currently running on port 8080. You can now run API calls on this server. I'll try that now. To send code to a PAC endpoint, you need to do two things. First, format the existing example.yaml file into JSON, then send it to the endpoint. 
Start by opening a new terminal within the same directory while you keep the server running in the first terminal. Then, to format the example file into JSON, type packed a example.yaml. After running this command, you should see the JSON data appear in the terminal. If you look close, you'll see the hash, the signature, the payload, and a few other details. Something you may recognize is that within the payload, you'll see the data including name, Stuart, language, packed, and the code 1 plus 2. By default, the A flag formats the YAML file into API requests for the send endpoint. Adding the L flag afterwards formats the API request for the local endpoint. You can choose between these depending on your needs for the application. Now that you have the data and the format you need, you can send it to the endpoint. To do that, you'll use this command. It's what you ran before, plus a curl command, including some important details. To start, it adds a pipe, then curl, to start the command. This command does two things. It states the content type as application JSON, and then sets the destination of the API call. In this case, it sets an API call to the local host on port 8080. By running this full command, you're both converting the file to JSON and making an API request to the send endpoint. As a response, you'll get back the request key, which is the hash value of the command you sent. Rather than just sending a command with send, you can use pull or listen to get back the result of running the code. Here's how you do that. Unlike before, you don't need to convert the YAML file into JSON because we're sending the request key, which is already in JSON format. What you'll do instead is only run the curl command, which includes specifying the data type that you'll read and setting the destination where that data exists. Like before, type curl h content type application JSON. Then set the destination as the request key you received when you sent the request using send. Follow this by a post to the localhost 8080 API endpoint. Finally, end this command with pull. After running this, you'll see the result of the expression from within the code. Remember, the code in the file was 2 plus 1, so this would return a value of 3. You can see that here. Before wrapping up, there's two more commands I'd like to show you. Along with send and pull, there's listen and local. The formatting for each of these is similar to other commands, so hopefully it's easy to catch on. First, listen is very similar to pull in that it can request the result of a transaction. The difference is, you would use listen to take in a single hash and return the result, where pull can take in multiple hashes and return multiple transaction results. Running this command looks like this. Hopefully you see the similarity to pull. The difference here is that you're listening to the hash value shown here, and you're making an API request to the listen endpoint. What you'll get back, like with poll, is the result of running the code, which, again, in this case, is 3. So in this case, these are pretty similar commands with similar results, but in the future, you may run into a case where you need to use either listen or poll, depending on your circumstance. Finally, the last command I'd like to show you is called local. Local takes in the command object within the code that queries from a blockchain. It only runs in the local server and does not impact the blockchain when returning transaction results. This is helpful to use when running a function that doesn't need to touch the blockchain. This is similar to send, but you would use send when changing data in the blockchain or when deploying contracts. Local is a better choice when you're working with simple functions or fetching data from the blockchain. Here's what that looks like. The command is structured very similar to send. It converts the example.yaml file to JSON, then makes an API request to the local endpoint. When running this, you'll see that it returns data along with the request key. And that's it. You've seen all four commands, send, poll, listen, and local. To quickly recap these commands, send takes in the command object and returns a transaction hash. Local takes in the command object with code that queries from the blockchain. It only runs on a local server and does not impact the blockchain, returning the transaction result. Listen takes in a hash and returns a transaction result. And poll is similar to listen, but works with multiple hashes and returns multiple transaction results. So that wraps up all you need to know about deploying and interacting with a local test server. And before you go, here's a quick recap. Starting in your terminal, you created a project directory along with an example.yaml and a config.yaml file to store your code. You then populated each of these files with some code that was provided in the documentation. You created a log folder that holds the data from the PAC server and then ran that server on port 8080. After the server was running, you converted the example.yaml file into JSON, then used curl commands to send it to the PAC server. 
either to store the data or to just read the result of running its code. You also got some practice using commands such as send, local, listen, and pull to interact with the PAC server. That said, we've set up a challenge to get you even more familiar with using YAML files for your local PAC server deployments. On the Kadena GitHub page, there's a repo named PACLang org code that includes the code samples and challenges used throughout the tutorials. Clone this folder using git clone followed by the project repo. From there, navigate to the folder set up and deploy, then challenge. In that folder, you'll see a new directory. Your job is to investigate the project structure and use what you've learned to both deploy the smart contract and call the hello world function on hello world.pact. Take some time now to try the challenge. Good luck, and when you're ready, I'll see you in the next tutorial.